In 1945, World War II had officially ended. The Nazi seat of power disintegrated with Hitler's death. The US dropped the first ever functional atomic bomb, and overall, roughly 50 to 80 million lives had been lost. Of those 50 to 8 million deaths, roughly 400,000 had been American lives. Another 670,000 had been wounded. This left roughly 14,900,000 US soldiers ready to return home, reunite with their families, get married, have children, and forget about the horrors of war. However, unfortunately for many of them, reintegration into American society was going to be a challenge, hence the creation of Levittown. According to National World War II Museum reports, the majority of the soldiers were between the ages of 18 and 32. After indulging the horrors of war, these soldiers were ready for change. Unlike today's corresponding demographic, soldiers returning were looking to settle down and embrace escapism. The evident appeal of living beyond the constant insulating noise while still being close enough to enjoy the benefits of its industrial and cultural vitality was ideal for suburbia. However, President FDR's New Deal programs failed to create a sufficient amount of affordable and quality housing. And so, along with the Institution of Servicemen's Readjustment Act of 1944, which gave soldiers financial assistance, the federal government gave private companies a chance to accelerate the addition of soldiers. The most famous being Levitt and Sons a small real estate development company with acres of potato farms on Long Island, New York. The plan was to capitalize on the increased demand for affordable quality housing by veterans returning home from war. The project began with a modest 250 houses in 1947 and eventually rose to 17,477 houses by 1951. Levin Sons didn't just build houses, however. They built communities consisting of public parks, swimming pools, playgrounds, and schools. Meanwhile, railroad advancements began to form convenient methods of transportation to New York City. Unfortunately, this solution, although progressive on the surface, led to increased segregation, persecution, and discrimination of perceived communists, African Americans, and other minorities. Historians like Kenneth Jackson believe that Due to both world wars and the anxiousness of the nuclear age, families felt like a family home provided a private haven in a heartless world, leading to an emphasis on suburban communities. The suburban lifestyle was not possible for everyone. Although houses were being built rapidly, the high birth rate of time, families lived in boxcars, large ice boxes, or even chicken coops in order to survive. For them, Levittowns represented an affordable, hopeful future. Although the Levitts did not devise the suburban structure, they definitely improved it. Different members of the family worked on improving the landscape, designing the homes, and marketing the house. They created a step-by-step -step plan for the construction of each house. Workers were specialized so that each could do a specific task. This became part of the reason why all the houses had similar structures. After construction, the Levitt communities served their purpose. They became peaceful areas filled with modern furniture and televisions. Houses were affordable to both white and blue collar workers and roads created an aura of safety. This level of control created by the Levitts began to refer to homogeneity amongst race as well. Bill Levitt solely sold houses to white buyers, completely excluding all minorities, especially African Americans. In 1953, 70,000 people lived in Levittowns, making them the largest communities with no African American presences. The Levitt's policy was originally based on leases. They stipulated that the tenant agrees not to permit the premises to be used or occupied by any person other than members of the Caucasian race. This was later deemed unconstitutional by a Pennsylvania court. However, the Levitts found a new way to enforce racial homogeneity by simply rejecting would-be black buyers. Groups arose across the United States protesting the Levitts and their policies. The National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, or NAACP, sued federal mortgage agencies in 1955 for helping homeowners finance the pur purchase of homes in communities while not allowing six black veterans to purchase a home. The Philadelphia court, however, dismissed the suit 
as they considered federal agencies not responsible for preventing housing discrimination. Unfortunately for the Levitts, homeowners could resell their houses to black buyers. William and Daisy Myers, a black couple with children in 1957, bought a house in the Levitt town located in Pennsylvania. Although the Levitt's form of segregation was decided to be unconstitutional, the system was upheld by prejudices and stereotypes. The family faced unceasing harassment and death threats. Furthermore, the police offered little to no help, as they did not stop mobs from forming outside the house day and night. The Myers, however, did persist and eventually filed criminal charges against the mob members. Additionally, President Roosevelt, as one of his reforms during the Great Depression, created an agency called the Homeowners Loan Corporation. This agency was created in order to protect homeowners from losing their homes. The agency created a system of rating neighborhoods with letter grades to determine property values. The neighborhoods housing minorities, deemed an undesirable element by the law, had the lowest grades. This system was then extended to mortgages. Historian Jackson Brandis writes, For perhaps the first time, the federal government embraced the discriminatory attitudes of the marketplace. Previously, prejudices were personalized and individualized. FHA exhorted segregation and enshrined it as public policy. The Myers experience was unfortunately not unique. Although Levittown's failed to combine cultures and disintegrate its segregation, multiple communities fought against segregation and embraced America's elusive melting pot. For example, Concord Park in Pennsylvania stressed its motto, democracy in housing. Furthermore, in time, Levittown-esque communities became less common. In 1962, President John F. Kennedy issued an executive order which prohibited racial discrimination in housing developments built or bought by the United States government. This progress did not result in complete national change, as the fight for street-by-street -street integration is still going on to this day. The Levitts set a precedent for segregation on Long Island. As much as we would like to think that America is a diverse melting pot, the truth is that Long Island is the most segregated section of the country which is mostly due to the issues created by the Levitts post-World War II. Racial communities grew in little pockets over the island, and real estate agents told their clients to choose areas that fit their ethnicity, allowing them to feel more welcome instead of alienated. Thus, segregation continues along today, a fact that can be very clearly seen in the correlation between school districts' average SAT scores and racial makeup. Based on the results of the 2015-2016 school year, the Wheatley School has an average SAT score of 1,759, the sixth highest on Long Island, while the Westbury Public Schools, located less than two miles away, have an average score of 1,208. The Wheatley School is about 70% white, while Westbury is about 95% Hispanic and black. Roosevelt Union Free School District, which is 99% black and Hispanic, has the second lowest SAT score on Long Island, which is 1,168. Jericho School, with 90% white and Asian students, has the highest SAT score of 1,855. A correlation obviously exists. That said, Levittowns were a solution to the surplus of soldiers needing homes to settle down and embrace escapism. However, Levittowns in themselves created a new conflict, one of segregation and anti-integration. This conflict did not have an immediate compromise, as the actions of the Levitts, McCarthy, the federal government, and state governments display. Furthermore, although integration has somewhat increased, there are still very evidently ethnic African American developments and housing zones commonly deemed ghettos, a demeaning term. Caucasians were the only ones appeased, as they got cheap housing, new amenities, and kept racial minorities out of their communities. Therefore, there has been no short-term or long-term compromise appeasing both African Americans and Caucasians to the conflict that was amplified due to the construction of homogenous Levittowns.